Today on this episode of Nightlife, we talk about player metagame knowledge. Is it a problem? Should you be using your player knowledge at the table? Let's find out. Hi, my name is Derek Melinda, the Game Master of the Knights of Last Call. I'm joined by Bob. Always ready, always stacked. <laughs> joined by Nick. How you doing today? I'm doing good, Nick. Joined by Tim. And of course, Matt. Sometimes ready, often not stacked. <laughs> <laughs> so today we're going to talk about a question that came in on our Patreon Discord from a new patron, Bill, who asked about metagaming. And his particular question, Bob. Yeah, he was asking about um, one of his players in his game might already know some of the lore of the mission that they're playing in. And when and Bob says mission, he sorry. means adventure or module. <laughs> Every time. <laughs> Every time. So dun, 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 Tip number one, dun. don't call it a mission. Yeah. <laughs> so this player already knows, and so he's wondering how he should handle that. Uh, if he knows more about the, uh, knows about the lore or monsters or everything. I mean, really, it's a metagaming question at that point. Yep. If, if, if we are going to play Rise of the Rune Lords and Tim has already played three sessions or the first couple uh, sessions or adventures and that is what should you, how do you handle that? If he already might know who the killer is or knows the lore, maybe, yeah. maybe not as extreme as that case. Yeah. yeah. And, it, and it can even be more basic than that. Um, this is something, uh, Matt, that you were saying uh, about trolls, right? You, Matt, know that trolls are big and dumb and weak to fire weak to acid, but does your character know that? And so if you go into a combat and there's a bunch of trolls and you're not making any recall knowledge checks, you're not making any intelligence or investigation checks uh, for you fifth edition players, uh, and you just say, all right, bust out the fireballs, get your acid flasks ready, we need to take out these trolls. Are you, are you, are you cheating? Yeah. Are you metaing right now? <laughs> are you metagaming? Well, and I mean, think about how short of a time frame you have to even enjoy the new things of a game, especially if you're starting from level one often. You can only run into a kobold so many times, and are you really going to force your players to make recall knowledge checks every time to know that a, what a kobold does? You know, and then it just scales up to higher level. It's, it's a non-issue in my opinion because it's going to happen anyway, no matter what. Uh, well, right, in the yeah, question, it had to be for the plot. Yeah, which is, you know, so what about what about his situation that uh, our patron was asking about, where you might have a player who has maybe they read the spoilers, or maybe they read right. they have, they, well, they, they, have they have advanced knowledge yeah. of the plot so, of an adventure or, or or the motivations of a character. I, I think it really depends on the information that you're talking about. So when you generalize, the word, no, the the, the 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 real dirt, the real team. You read the page, so, no, the, page no, so I'm getting it. So like when you talk about the trolls, it's a general ten, uh, kind of a general knowledge type of thing, right? Of the world that of, you live in, exactly. Yeah. So in that aspect. That kind of applies, it should be allowed because it's kind of a, a general knowledge type of thing, right? But if you go into the spoilers and I know, oh, I know he did it. So I know if we do this in the beginning, it'll end up, you know, making it easier at the end. So do you kick that player out of your game? I, that's the conversation you have to have with that player and probably with the group. Hey, so-and-so knows kind of how this ends. What do we want to do with that, Tim? Right, so I, you know, I have a couple of points. One, I think this is why your adventure should never be based on a mystery of any kind <laughs> um, because the internet exists now and spoilers are a thing. Unless you build it yourself. Unless you've built it yourself. I mean, that might be a good reason for and, building it things right. yourself. Yeah, maybe <laughs> it is. sandbox. Um, but even then, depending on the addition, you might have to ban some spells. Uh, <laughs> um, but, you know, so that's, that's my first point. Uh, but then my second point is, yeah, I mean, you absolutely don't stop them from playing. You wouldn't, you know, if you cast a fireball on some trolls, you're not going to kick that guy out. Um, if, if they know something about the adventure, if it's a murder, you know, talk to them, talk to your other players. Would your other players be disappointed? Do you have to, you have to feel out the table a little bit? Are your other well, players right, going to be disappointed? Because at that point, you're asking your player to not make decisions based on information that they know. Right. It's kind of like the... So you're asking them to basically operate against their self-interest, right? So you're would, asking uh, them to play but a it's role. A, but it, it depends, <laughs> yeah. though, because... I don't know if he knows exactly something, but he knows about a setting in an extinction curse. And he might know about that or why it's there. He hasn't really elaborated. So I don't know if it's... He knows the murderer... You know, where it could be right. real extreme well, to the spoiler. But, but it, it depends. But you know something. Yeah, like it depends, too, on how much, how far it takes it. 
do I take it and I go, I know we're going to have these kind of monsters. So I'm going to somewhat stack the deck in that favor because yeah. I know it's coming. So I'm going to be just better prepared for it. Or well, do I know the exact thing that I need to do to solve a puzzle and I don't let the team could or you, the rest could of them you recuse go? Your, you rec recuse yourself? Yeah, you could recuse yeah. yourself. Yeah. Uh, That's what I mean. Yeah, I think mm -hmm. there are certain instances where a player could recuse themselves. I think and, you, I, and actually, I've seen players mature, do that I think. before. I've yes. seen players yeah. do that before. I've seen um, some of our other players in, in different groups who have been through certain adventures or things say, I am going to abstain uh, from this decision because I kind of have too much knowledge. And I, I, I think and, that's and, a great way to and, handle and, it. Absolutely. Way, and the reason they're doing that isn't out of any sense of fairness or balance. They're doing it because they said, hey, I had fun the first time yeah, I, I went through here. I want you to have I want you all to have fun. Yeah. And right. I think that's really what it comes down yeah. to. Yeah, because but if they're going and they're railroading it for the whole party, then you might have to step in as a GM to say, okay, let let other people kind of. I mean, it help does take a strong that. will. You know, I mean, this is maybe a little bit extreme, but if you know that uh, down that road lies death, <laughs> and everyone in your team is like, <laughs> hey, let's go, let's go, let's go yeah. left, let's go left. I mean, it's it, it's a big ask and it's a big responsibility. I think it could be kind of fun because it, it kind of gives you almost like an, an inside man or an inside girl to uh, let you, you know, sort of. Uh, uh, have a accomplice on the inside in the sense that they kind of maybe know where the, the plot is supposed to go. They might even nudge you a little bit further. It also depends on how it goes, like how the rest of the team plays. So like if we know Bob has played it already and we're like, yeah, so we're going to go down the right hall. Bob, no, what do you no, think no, of that? No, the, is that okay? Left, we should go down. Okay. We're going to go down. The left. Right. Like, <laughs> uh, I mean, I guess, I, I guess what it, it, you know, but that can be, you know, we can take that to an extreme, which is like, uh, you know, if you followed our, our our actual plays, you know that in the second adventure, the second chapter, uh, spoiler, spoiler, spoiler. Alert, the Skinsaw Murders, uh, the group uh, of relative noobs uh, came across a grisly murder scene where the uh, uh, again, spoiler alert, where the the slayer, the killer, was actually a ghoul, and this is a group that had very little. Uh, existing D and D now, all new to D and D, all new to Pathfinder. So, you know the the telltale signs of a ghoul attack: uh, a paralyzed form, a rotten stench, claw marks, bite marks, all went right over their heads. They Absolutely. didn't understand that. Whereas a more seasoned character, again, this is all general knowledge. Right. A seasoned character at that table. Now, this isn't a situation where they've read the adventure; they know the spoilers. They just go, "Oh, that's a ghoul." Yeah. Right. They like immediately know that. They just know that. Anyone who's been playing D and D for ten years or whatever. 20 years is going to know that's a ghoul. And so imagine you go up against a group of, uh, we're, we were using trolls as a as an example before, but there are other monsters where I immediately go, oh, like for example, uh, it's an ochre jelly. It's a flesh golem. Not me, Derek, if I was a player in your group, I go, oh, don't use blomp. Because oh, yep. like, I know, I know and, nothing and about see, them. And Tim knows, don't use blah. Yep. He knows, he knows I not, have no idea what yeah. not to use or what to use. So. Exactly. Recall, Recall knowledge. knowledge. Yeah. So That's in right. that situation, if I'm at the table, what do I say? What do I do? Mm -hmm. Do I act on that knowledge? I mean, here's the thing, right? What would you do? Well, no, but here's the question. It's, it's about, it's a role-playing game, right? Which is to say, my character might not know that knowledge, but- It might. Okay, but you're missing, well, we are missing one important part of the game. It's a game. Yeah. And right. I'm mm -hmm. playing it. Okay. It's not like, it's not, are you not allowed to get better at games anymore? Correct. Like why <laughs> no. can't my, why can't not, not my character level up. Why can't I level mm -hmm. up? Oh, you sound like an old school D and D player. <laughs> well, right, it's it's kind of like, uh, it's a little, bit, it's a little yeah. bit old school. I agree. It's kind of like, well, and it's kind of like video game skill too, right? Like there's two kinds of skill when you're playing an FPS shooter, your actual ability to control your character and map knowledge. Right. And map knowledge is kind of what we're talking about here. It's knowing where the rocket launcher is going to spawn. It's knowing a troll's weak to fire. Correct. Right. Yeah. It's knowing where the sniper rifle is and what timing it spawns at. I, it, it's knowing, you know, this I, thing, I, an assassin vine has resistance to fire. I think it's okay yeah. to be good at role playing games. And by that, I don't necessarily mean that you're a good voice actor. Mm -hmm. I think when people hear the term, oh, well, nowadays, nowadays, when people hear the term, oh, Nick is good at role playing games. They envision that Nick is a theater major, and no. they think that well, <laughs> if they hear that, I they know, think that, and so they think, oh, he's really good at role playing games, or she's really good at role playing games. She must be really good at developing backstories and really good at developing interesting ideas for her character. But that doesn't necessarily. Why are we shaking our heads? Because I am, I am, not, I am not good. At, I'm not good at those either. <laughs> so to your point, absolutely, okay. you get that stigma but, of it, but it's not playing But I think. You can be good at role-playing games and be good at the, 
the game part of the game. Absolutely. You can be good at building characters and knowing things and being like, Oh, I think there's a trap down that hallway. And I think, uh, hmm, you know what? I'm going to, I just have a sixth sense about this. I, I think there's a secret door in this room. And, and this isn't spoiler knowledge. It's just, I've played the I mean, game a long it's time. Experience. Anytime that there's a door, hallway door, I'm like, there's a trap. Every, right. every time. They're like, right. you're, you entered a, a, a 10 foot hallway and you see in our door, I'm like, I check for traps. Right. 100% trap in this, I mean, in this hallway. Because, right, because, <laughs> Why does this hallway exist? <laughs> you're constantly making decisions for your character. Like when you go into combat, like your, your, your character isn't the one in that fight. You are because you're the one who's making their decisions. Mm-hmm, right. right. If you were truly role playing, you'd be like, um, I'm going to make a check. And I want you to tell me what my character thinks they should do. <laughs> yeah. right. Sounds hard. Start making intelligence checks to determine what actions your character takes. Correct. No, you are making oh, decisions. And, and, yeah. and, and you cannot take away too much of the player agency because that's yeah. why I'm here. Right. If, and so, yeah, if I've been playing role-playing games for 10 or 15 years and I have this encyclopedic knowledge, I don't know. I, I think I should get to flex that. Absolutely. I think I that part's okay. I think it's, it's really when the meta becomes a spoiler. I think when you know the adventure, you got to rec- recuse yourself. Well, yeah, if you're going to go, I hey, this is friend- the murderer or yeah. something like that, and you ruin the whole— If you're Either if don't you're- play, or if you're going to play with your friends, let them have fun and yeah. just— But you need to know going in, is this going to be a AP that you're going to do and for more of the storyline, and you want to follow that? Or is this like a sandbox thing? Because the sandbox can kind of go anywhere anyways, Yeah, right? I agree with that. And, so, I, I, and I think that's really what it comes down to. If I have specific knowledge of plot elements or— sp- Spoilery type things. Um, yeah, I, I think you're 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 being uh, inappropriate if you if yeah. you use that. I mean, it's fun, it's, what's funny is that I think if I knew something about the adventure, you would just change you know on the fly that ad, that part of the adventure because you you know and I'd be like <laughs> that, that, that's you. It. That's you, an even better answer. Is well, I, absolutely. Change it up so that everyone gets to enjoy yeah. the surprise, right? I thought for sure there was something here. Not today. Right. No <laughs> traps. Yeah. I think I think uh, the other thing you could do is if if you're an experienced enough player, you can you can add to the to the lore. Uh, so like I know that maybe trolls are weak to fire, but I don't say, "Hey guys, trolls are weak to fire," but I say like, "Ah, I wonder if this old fireball is going to help." You know, like you say yeah, you make it fun. in character back in the yeah, day. Like, give a couple of hints yeah, that, but not blatantly call it out and say uh, it. Yeah. Yeah, well, I, I, yeah, yeah. That would That'd be fun for your new, like, if you have a bunch of new players. Now, if you're all OGs, I feel like you guys are just all... You're just going to run. We all know these trolls. (laughs) Trolls, get the fires ready, guys. I mean, like, with our group, we've been playing for, you know, 20 years. Like, it's just like, trolls, like, activate protocol (laughs) (laughs) 257. 25-7 alpha. Execute order 66. Yeah, execute order 66. (laughs) Yeah. We we know how to kill some trolls. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Been around the troll block. A handful of troll moors. Right. And again, I think it's okay uh, to be to get better at the game and to learn, oh, this monster has this weakness. This monster has this resistance. This monster has this kind of save. This monster, this is a good tactic. Oh, that monster's really slow. And, you know, the same way that you would in any other sort of sport or group activity, it's nice to have someone on your team mm-hmm. who has that sort of veteran knowledge. And sure, like, you can make it part of your character. You can make it part of role-playing. But sometimes, well, sometimes a role-playing game doesn't, you don't have to. You don't have to role play at every moment of your role you know, play it's, game. It's, it's also just a game. You know right? what's funny? Right? Is you're that, sitting around a table or an online section with your friends, yes, or with mm-hmm. and, and you're just looking to have a good time. And when someone knows something and it makes it a lot easier and more fun, and you say, "I'm glad I'm playing with," you know, Tim because <laughs> Tim just. He knows everything, and it's it's fun. It's great. You feel like you're learning from them, right? One of the examples I had is your buddy uh, or our buddy Aaron. Uh, we a were, patron. A patron. Uh, we were going up. Uh, we were talking about going up against a banshee in, in a game of mine. And I'm like, yeah, they used to go up against the banshee, and they almost died. But whatever. He's like, the second I see a banshee, I'm like, we're gonna die. We should we should run away or something. So he knew beforehand going in, and he kind of made a joke to me when we were playing their game. He's like, yeah, if we, if we encounter this, we, we, we hightail and run. I'm like, what? Why? He's like, cause we're going to die. Like right. we are going to die. I'm like, are you sure? Like, I just feel like I go in and attack things. Uh, no, Bob, we will die. <laughs> right. <laughs> and, Death and it, is imminent. Yeah. It became sort of comical and it actually was fun to know that. Like, I, I wasn't like, how dare you tell me that spoiler? I was like, Okay, I kind of I think I should run away. <laughs> like, it, it kinda, and it kind of gives it like, adds to it. And, yeah. and to, to that end, uh, the the most famous example of spoiler is from years and years ago. Uh, we were playing through this old third edition adventure series, and we never played the final adventure, which is called Bastion yeah. of Broken Souls. And uh, this is an old 3.0 adventure from D and D. Uh, and a friend of ours. Uh, 
read the adventure module because he, he felt so disappointed that we never got a chance to play it. So he read through it. And it turns out like eight months later, we finally had the time to play through it. And he had read everything. He didn't really recuse himself, but he was basically just like, he was terrified. Yeah. Oh, it was great. He I don't want to go down there, guys. Yeah, yeah. No, no, no. He was no. terrified of like the final boss. And he was like telling everybody, he's like, this thing is the most unbelievably destructive monster I've ever seen in my entire life. Because listen, I know that I'm a big barbarian with the, 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 the sword that can slay gods. But when this thing appears, I am fleeing. Right. <laughs> I am, I am, See you, suckers. There's not been a single thing that my character has run from, his, from in his entire life. But it will be right. this. And so, in <laughs> a way, now. his spoiler knowledge almost enhanced the effect. That's what I'm saying. Oh, sometimes awesome. it could be cool. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes well, it's yeah. fun. It depends and on how you use it, though. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. The metagaming can add to it or it can be destructive. Right. And if it adds to it, it'll make it that much more enjoyable sure. for the rest I of the party. I also think there's an element of metagaming that makes the game more strategic. Oh, absolutely. I agree. And, and I, I think the vast majority of that kind of knowledge is not, like, it's not going to lead you to a gotcha moment with a, you know, there's very rare, it's very rare that it's a murder mystery plot or some gimmick for the fight, right? Like most of the time, you still have to do the fight. Like having knowledge is nice, but you still it doesn't battle. make you immune. It's not like you hand wave everything and can just ignore the 10 trolls there because you know they work to fire and you took fireball. Yeah, exactly. And, yeah, it may help you, but it doesn't solve and, and just right. yeah. create a, a, a easy path so, to take. even if your players have knowledge ahead of time, I don't see it as much of an issue. Yeah, I think you either, so to sum up, if your players uh, have information or knowledge about an adventure, you obviously, number one, step one, you have to have a conversation with them and talk about what are the expectations. And if they don't feel like they're going to be able to, uh, you know, not spoil it for everyone else, then you ask them to sit this one out. If they seem like they are able to, uh, you know, per, you know, keep things in check and not spoil everything, then you simply ask that if there's a situation where their knowledge would ruin or spoil adventure, they just sort of abstain, they sort of recruit themselves, or they kind of play along in a sort of, you know, a way that's going to help and, and advance the plot. Um, and the third option is as the uh, GM, you know, without, it up. without even telling that player, yeah. you switch it up on them. <laughs> and so when they're expecting, when they're expecting it to go this way, it goes that way, you know, and, and then you, fine. and then you get everybody at the table at the same time. Yeah. It's almost like even a bigger surprise. Oh, right. Yeah. Um, and I think those are great options, but I think at the end of the day, it just really comes down to having a conversation and talking about yep. it. Communicate. Absolutely. Communicate. That's all it is. And that's, and that's for like for specific spoilered meta game knowledge. Um, and honestly, again, I've said this before. I've said this to my players many times. I've said this to you all many times. Um, the number one issue that a GM or a DM has at a table is communicating information to their players so that the players have a good enough base of information to be able to make good decisions. You can't make good decisions unless you're well-informed about what's going on. All right. And, and that, even then. And even then. <laughs> and then after you make a good decision, you have to make, you have to still have to roll high on a dice. Right. Um, and and so I have always felt that like the more information the players have, the better. Like I've never seen a situation where the players were like, "We know so much, uh, this has ruined the game." It, it usually it's the opposite, yeah. right? Where the players don't know enough, they become frustrated because it doesn't mm -hmm, feel like mm -hmm. they know how to make a good decision, or they make a what they feel is a terrific decision, but it's actually a terrible decision because they're operating on incomplete or false information. So I that's think that's why you always hate that um, when you critically fail that you might get false information. Yeah, so that, that that was like one of your worst things. My number one bugaboo <laughs> in Pathfinder 2nd Edition. I hate this rule more than any other rule, which is on a recall knowledge, which is secret, if you critical fail, which means I, the game master, roll for your skill, and if I critical fail that check, like I roll a one or I roll really, really low on a high DC, the game instructs me that I am supposed to give you false information and lie to you. I cannot stress to you enough, never do this ever. It is the worst <laughs> idea I've ever heard of in a game. I am ashamed that they included it. I think it is a horrific, <laughs> horrible, absolutely game-destroying idea. And um, I... I don't know. I'd love to sit. I'd love to sit Jason Bowman down, and I'd love to sit. Uh, 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 Why? Why, man? Yeah. <laughs> um, and, and just un explain to me what what was going through your mind when this came up? Because red herrings are horrible in role playing games. It, it, players will get distracted when you literally give them the clue, like the murder weapon is in their hand, <laughs> and they still won't solve the mystery. The last thing you need to be doing is giving them red herrings, misdirections. It's just a terrible idea. Don't do it. Yep. 
So yeah, I, I think red herrings and misdirection are okay, but I think giving them false information because of a bad role is probably. I, a bad I, idea. I'm still not a big fan of red herrings and misinformation. And I mean, like game. it happens in the story no, itself. It, there are certain things that, and this is a, well, we're getting off topic, but there just because there's this a is na- for another to- another yeah. another yeah, night. But we <laughs> have to revisit but, uh, that one. <laughs> what are, what's good? What's good for novels and stories is not always good for role playing games, and and that inclu- that includes certain tropes, yep. like uh, like red herrings. So, anyways. So that was our quick take, relatively quick take, uh, on metagaming. And, um, Maybe it was more hot than quick. <laughs> it was a hot take. I think it's fine, and I think that uh, you know, if you, there is a player with specific spoilery knowledge of an adventure or of a monster or of a villain or of a mystery, you just have to have a conversation with them, right? You, you want to play with your friends. You want to play with your, your, uh, your group. And you want to have fun. Yeah, you want to have a people. good time. That's mm-hmm. the main thing. So, as long as they're mature enough to handle that kind of responsibility— right. You know, and if they crack and break under the pressure and, and, and ends up being hilarious, well, that's okay too. You know, right. as long as they're All enjoying the it, who cares? Yeah, yeah. that's yeah. right. Well, thanks for joining us for this episode of the Nightlife. Uh, click uh, below to subscribe and like and ring the bell if you want to get more of our content. Join uh, our ongoing combat and tactics series, or check out any of our number of other videos. We also have an actual play where we're playing through the Rise of the Rune Lords campaign. And if you're really interested in helping us out and getting to know us a bit better, we do have a Patreon. We have a bunch of patron-exclusive benefits, including access to our Discord server, and we'd love to hear you there and uh, talk to you there. That's where this question came from. That's right. That's right. So You can influence the next topics. (laughs) That's right. So thanks again, everyone, and we'll see you next time. Mm